Ahoy! Today we are making an item tier list. But more specifically, this is going to be a tier 1 only item tier list. And this is not a meme or anything of that sort. Um, this is in light of the upcoming patch in which we'll see significant changes uh, to the early meta because of the removal of boots. And, uh, well, no longer needing boots because you get the movement speed naturally instead through leveling. So a lot of early options uh, change. And I think most people will still be running starter items. I think that will not change for the most part, for now at least. Um, but I wanted to talk about what you can build along with the starter item. This excludes Red Tosca's uh, Acorn because you get that anyways. Uh, but everything else is in here. Uh, and this, on one hand, looks at the stats of the items, which are very interesting. Some items have significantly higher stats on tier 1 than others. And on the other hand, also talks about uh, what they can be built into, or, or factors in what they can be built into, in order to consider what value they have in combination with that. So two different aspects that come together here to give these items a tier. Obviously, as always, this is personal opinion. This is not something like super set in stone that won't change at all with the next patch because there are plenty of changes uh, that will be happening in terms of meta overall. And this is just like a little bit of an overview, a little bit of something for fun. Zilaria suggested this on my Patreon and I figured this would be a fun thing to do. So let's get into it. And we're going to start with the physical items, then we go through the, the magical damage items and uh, we'll end up with the uh, defense items. The bruiser items are in the, in the damage sections. So the first one we have here is Morningstar. I just have to pull this up here. Um, which I think is a very strong item to start out with. Morningstar costs 600 gold, which is on the cheaper end for physical items. Uh, it comes with 10 power, which is almost the highest. The highest is 15 on some items, but also provides 5 MP5. Uh, this gives you a lot of early pressure because you have high power for clearing, or relatively high power, uh, along with the MP5 to use more abilities, which is, in my opinion, very crucial in early game. And that uh, can build a lot of lane pressure, and it also builds into Transcendence, which is obviously one of the best early game items that we have at the moment, uh, probably even after the nerf that it, it got uh, post-PTS. So I would say in terms of, uh, in terms of yeah, how well you can start out, this is one of the best options you can have. Again, this is only looking at Tier 1 options. We're looking at Tier 2 options and factoring them in as well. That will be a different conversation. Uh, so keep this in mind. This is just if we're looking at the tier 1 in combination with a traditional starter item. The second item is Spite Gauntlet, which is obviously uh, the, the counterpart to Morningstar in many ways when we're looking at uh, carry specifically. Same price, 600 gold, uh, but only comes with 5 power, but also comes with 7% um, lifesteal. I actually want to verify that I, I have the stats written down correctly, just to make sure. Um, but I'm pretty sure that is exactly uh, what it is here. And if that's the case, then I would say this is an A plus item. I think uh, the power is relatively low with five. That is, that is worse than most others. So that is something uh, that we have to factor in somehow. Uh, but at the same time, uh, that's not all, right? <laughs> you still have 7% life steal and that's very good early sustain. Yeah, I was correct about the numbers. I, I just had to make sure if it's not a little bit lower. So even though it's a relatively low power item, I think the life steal kind of makes up for that uh, more than, than with other item choices. Though, the more I think about it, maybe we'll put it in A. Um, yeah, maybe we'll put it in A. It still has a very good upgrade with Devils, so that is high value. But the other upgrades aren't that great for most, um, for most cards in early game. I think it would need a little bit more power to fully justify uh, A+. But yeah, no, yeah a, a, a is still fine for it. Then we have Kajal. Um, Kajal is technically a super good item in early game. Comes with 10 power along with 75 health, which means you would win most boxing matches, even if the enemy has like 15 power. Um, 650 gold is just slightly more expensive than these two. Uh, but the problem is that it doesn't really build into anything useful in early game. As such, I give it A as well. Like the item itself, uh, definitely better than A in terms of stats. One of the best uh, starting items you can have. But it just doesn't have anything that you want to have on most characters in early game. Sledge was build early for a while but i don't think that's you know the highest value choice so uh yeah i, I think uh, i think there are better options for the most part and because of that i think uh, a is is uh, justifiable here based on the base stats and then we have mace mace coming in at 650 gold as well it comes with 15 power so one of the highest clearing highest uh, pressure ones you can get but doesn't provide any other stats i would say there's an a plus item uh, especially for for junglers, this is still very, very good. Um, 
though I think some of them will opt into Transcendence or into other options as well. Um, obviously has multiple good upgrades for early game uh, and very high stats for very early clear. So yeah, I think overall this is definitely one of the good ones. Hang on, I'm going to adjust my camera here just a little bit. It's like looking up so weirdly. Oh, I'm still looking up kind of, I guess, whatever. That confused me. Okay. And uh, then we have Round Shield. Round Shield uh, provides 10 power, but also 5 physical protection. Uh, for 650 gold as well. In a boxing match, I think this would technically outweigh uh, Mace. I think this would be the, the better choice to go for. Um, I think the upgrades aren't quite as good. I think it's like a, a, at the front of A. I think it's kind of here. Um, but I think most upgrades aren't that usable for most characters in early game. Shifters was nerfed. Uh, Void Shield in solo is, a, is, is one that you can build. Actually, maybe, yeah, maybe that's an argument for A+. Yeah, maybe we put it in A+, for Void Shield and solo. Um, not that popular on most at the moment, I think. Um, but yeah, I think the problem is that it's, it's just kind of outclassed by, if, if you're going for aggression, it's kind of outclassed by Mystical Male uh, and many other options if you're like more AA focused. Um, but no, still definitely a, a good item. And again, very good stats with the early physical defense along with good power for clearing, which most other items don't offer. And we have Short Bow, 650 gold, 15% attack speed. That's it. Uh, this is, in my opinion, a B tier item. Uh, on one hand, it's just attack speed, which is generally not that good in early game. You want to have some uh, power behind your your ba basic attacks and abilities, really. Um, whereas pure attack speed scales better in later stages when you have some power uh, to, to hit harder with individual shots already. And uh, the other problem is that it just doesn't upgrade very well. It, when when the Archival was a, a tier 2 upgrade, it used to be great in that regard. It would have been a like super high pressure early item, but that's no longer the case. Uh, there is a bit of a disclaimer here, though, that um, I could imagine uh, with the, the meta changes, with the buffs to Atalantas and uh, I think Silver Branch has pretty decent stats at the moment as well, um, that we might see some changes here down the road, that um, that we might actually see it built more in early with one of these item choices, potentially. But uh, that's still too much speculation for me to put it any higher, especially because, again, the, the, the attack speed alone, in my opinion, isn't particularly great, and there are many other options that are better. Then we have Enchanted Buckler, uh, 650 gold as well, 10 physical power and 10 magical protection. I think this is actually a very strong item if you're against a magical opponent, because this is um, the same price, the same power as Round Shield, but uh, twice the magic protection that Round Shield has in physical protection. Now, it is worth keeping in mind that physical protection is more valuable early game, because it uh, protects you from enemy players, but also from minions better. Uh, but I think in an in anti-magical matchup, most of the damage will still come from the enemy guard, uh, and as such, I think that can be a very, very good option. And uh, Brunic Shield, I think, is still a valuable enough upgrade for, for it to be considered uh, on the aggressive side. Obviously, on the defensive side, we have other options. Then we have Light Blade. Light Blade comes with 5 power and 10% attack speed, uh, which technically makes it just slightly better than Short Bow. Um, the problem is that basically all of the uh, the upgrades are not usable in early game. You definitely don't want to build Kins, you don't want to build Exa. Like, maybe RC, maybe if you if you say I want to have the pen and power, you could consider RC as an early game choice. But unlikely. I'm I'm just barely going to give it B. I was originally put it in, going to put it in C, um, but I think uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's very similar to Shotbone in many ways. I think they kind of around the same realms so yeah no i think i think b is fair but really only if you're somehow planning to rush ASEAN and work with that other than that i don't think there's much of a choice much of a reason there and ASEAN's are like it's still a, a very slow pathing to ASEAN, so you have to have an, a like a, a good starter along with it sustain providing starter or something uh that makes it work and you're gonna you're gonna struggle against someone who's like building into morningstar or something then we have katana Katana, I think, is just a, a solid one. 650 uh, gold, 10 power, so not the highest, but 3% movement speed. I think on certain guards that will still be very valuable, uh, along with the movement speed you get from boots. So definitely not bad. Um, I think AA junglers especially will be looking towards building that. I think we'd put it at the, at the beginning of A here. Um, in one of the various iterations of upgrades, like maybe stone cutting, maybe golden blade will make a comeback. Uh, we'll have to see, but I think uh, in that regard it has value. And again... 
decent stats, but not the best stats. Like Mace for clearing specifically, for example, is better. And I think the movement speed doesn't quite offset that on its own. Hidden Dagger, 700 gold, uh, 15 uh, power, nothing else. Technically not bad. Um, if you look at Mace, Mace is 650 gold and 15 power. So Katana is 50 gold more, same stats. So it's, it's definitely not as good as Mace. But as a tier one alone, I think Hidden Dagger is not bad. The problem is, what are you going to build it into? Um, and most of the options that you have here are not really worth considering an early game. Um, maybe, maybe there will be some really stupid meta where people will rush Rage to just stack it as quickly as possible and, and get crit because you don't need boots anymore. I don't know. Um, but I think you would build something else beforehand anyways. So, like, on its own, I think it would be more of a B or C. Uh, no, like, in terms of upgrades, more of a B or C. But on its own, um, this item stats are actually really good. <laughs> like, it's surprisingly high power for a, a reasonable price still. It's just 50 gold more. So, I can't really put it lower than that. But, yeah, it's probably not advisable to build it un unless you know, like, uh, exactly what you're doing with it. And then we have Shuriken. A Shuriken is most certainly a C tier item because... Um, it has 10 power and 5% attack speed, which uh, for 650 gold is, is not horrible, but also not the greatest option. Again, I'd rather have 5 more power at this point. Uh, and then along with that, none of the upgrades make any sense at all in early game. Like with Rage, you can say, okay, I want this in early game because I want to try and stack it. With any of the Shuriken upgrades, that's just no reason. I, I, I don't see why anyone would want to rush Wind Demon or Poison Star um, or, or the... Enter here one, uh, Shadow Steel. It's it, you're not really getting enough out of it, in my opinion. So yeah, that's the physical part, and then we have uh, the the magical one. So the next option or the next item that we have here is Lost Artifact. Uh, I think Lost Artifact is in many ways very similar uh, to Morningstar, only that it's even cheaper. It's 550 gold, uh, provides 20 power and five MP5. I think this is straight up SD. I think this is even yeah. This is. I'm going to leave the physical ones at the front here, but I would otherwise put this in front of uh, Morningstar because this item is too good for what for the price tag, in my opinion. I don't know why it exists in its current state. I think uh, I think this should be at least 600 gold as well, especially because it provides multiple good upgrades for early game as well. So there's no reason for it to be so cheap um, when it, yeah it's already so good. And then we have Tiny Trinket. Tiny Trinket also providing 20 power uh, along with 6% lifesteal. Uh, I would say this is actually a pretty good early game item as well. Again, very, very cheap. I don't know why mage items are cheaper uh, by, by, by default. But um, this also provides high power for clearing, but it also provides you with sustain from clearing. So that is very nice. It's just a little bit of a boost early game. I think the MP5 is a little bit more valuable just to spam your abilities in early game, but uh, it's still a very good choice. And honestly... I mean, Lifesteal wasn't really meta lately, but that was also partially because of Lifesteal boots. Uh, maybe we'll see like Soul Gem builds. Um, maybe we see Bancrofts possibly making a return now that Lifesteal boots don't exist anymore. Maybe, maybe some people want to get their Lifesteal in other ways. Uh, so I could see this making a bit of a comeback as well. Uh, and as such, I think it's, it's uh, definitely an option that should be put here in, in, in some variation. Then we have Druid Stone. Uh, Druidstone, 600 gold, uh, 10 power, 20 magical protection. Very high magical protection, actually. Um, but again, just magical protection. I think this is uh, not... Well, actually, mm, kind of thinking. Uh, no, never mind. I'm going to put this in A+. Uh, I was going to put this in A, but I kind of uh, realized that if you're building this on support into Stone of Binding, it's obviously a great item. Um, the problem is that it's magical protection, and you, if you want to go into Stone of Binding to get mixed protection, you have to go through a... A brief period of having magical protection only in order to get to the physical protection. I think that's a bit of a problem with this item. But then there's also the Voidstone uh, way for solos. So, no, actually, I think this is an A plus item. This is very similar to uh, Enchanted Buckler here in many ways, just uh, the magical version of it, really. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty good. And then we have Imperial Helmet, uh, the physical counterpart, um, which is also 600 gold, uh, 10 power and 20 physical protection very high early physical protection with 20 that's uh basically one of the best items that you can have in early game i, th I think uh, even like other defense items don't offer more than that i think that's the highest physical protection you can get 
in combination with power for 600 gold which is like really 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 good now the problem is that most of the upgrades for most characters aren't really that great don't really make that much sense in early game uh and unless that changes somehow and and they get picked up uh that won't make much of a difference for the item like obviously outliers exist like lotus crown users uh, can make good use of this but those are not the majority the majority is, is kind of yeah just hoping that they could be get something better out of, it, out of it but as a tier one it's uh, it's fantastic in terms of stats it's probably even better than those two up here if we're just looking at the raw stats uh, should put it at the at the front of the uh, magical items as well and then we have magic focus 25 power and that's it now this is one of the two highest power items uh, when it comes to um early game choices tier one choices but it doesn't really offer anything beyond that it's just power which is nice for clearing i guess but it doesn't provide any mp5 from lost artifact which i'd rather have uh, any life steal from tiny trinket which i'd rather have and it's also 650 gold which is the well top end in terms of expensiveness uh, for mage items so i think this is a b tier item uh, for the sake of early game so I, I don't really see much value in, in building this. Um, some guards can use it with Spear of the Magus, maybe. Uh, but overall, yeah, I, I don't see I don't see most of the uh, upgrades being valuable enough to to warrant anything higher than this. I'd rather have something else that provides a better balanced mix of stats. Then we have Uncommon Staff. Uh, Uncommon Staff, fifteen power, so middle of the field, uh, seventy five health. Which would mean that in, in many trades you'll actually come out on top. Uh, 650 gold. Uh, more towards the expensive end here. If I compare this to like Tiny Trinket, which comes with more power and, and lifesteal, which would kind of offset like the, the healthy end of trade a little bit, uh, I think it's significantly weaker. Uh, I think the only reason really to build this is to go into Warlock Staff. Uh, and if you're doing that next patch, then the question is if you even want to build a starter along with it, uh, or if you just want to go right into the tier 2. Uh, but if we're looking at the, just the tier 1 and we're not going into the tier 2, I don't think this is a particularly great item. Uh, and most of the upgrades aren't that great for early game anyways, even though Warlocks uh, might see some popularity gain. And then we have Emerald Ring. An Emerald Ring is, in my opinion, S tier. I think this is one of the best starter items, uh, period. Emerald Ring costs less than, <laughs> than Magic Focus, which was... Uh, 650 gold, Emerald Ring only costs 600 gold, has the same amount of power, 25 power, and also provides you with 5% attack speed, just for free on top of that. This is like, uh, they buffed this in 8.6 and it honestly has that bloat. They buffed it specifically so that, that magical ADCs would have a better chance, better fighting chance in early game and uh, yeah, I mean... With these stats, you really should be able to. The problem was that, you know, usually you couldn't really build into that. You had to get around your boots somehow, and uh, you had the disadvantage of not getting the, the attack speed boots that Hunter's got. No longer a problem. You you get your own ring now. Um, and I think that is incredibly uh, scary in terms of potential for magical ADC. So, yeah, I, I really think this is, like, the item to look out for. It's a real sleeper item right now, because stat-wise, it's absolutely insane. And then we have Spellbook. Spellbook uh, obviously built in the Book of Thoth. That's what we're building it for in early game primarily. Um, 20 uh, power, 75 mana for 650 gold. So a little bit more power than Uncommon Staff, uh, but no health or anything else, just mana. And I think mana is not as great as MP5. Like it takes like, uh, I think it was less than a minute to, to get the same mana with uh, Lost Artifact or something. Don't quote. Yeah, I think you get uh, 5 MP5. No, you get 60, 60 mana per minute with Lost Artifact, and you get 75 flat mana with Spellbook. So if you're staying out of base just a little bit over a minute, it's 1 minute 15 seconds, then um, you get more mana out of Lost Artifact than you get out of Spellbook. Uh, so I, I would always prefer the MP5 in that regard. And then again, it's, it's also more expensive with the same amount of power. So really, there's not much of a selling point here. And if you're building into Book of Thoth, then similar to uh, Warlock Staff, I would probably consider just starting with the tier 2 and not looking at the tier 1, depending on how exactly you want to play. But I think it just doesn't provide much inherent value. And that brings us to the tank options. Here we have uh, Ancient Blade first, um, which is very, very cheap with 550 gold. But it also just provides 50 health uh, and 5% movement speed. Now, 5% movement speed, early rotations, kind of cool. 
Um, you know, especially because you can have it at the start of the game now, and in the scales with your own movement speed, it's kind of like building tier 1 boots. Which I guess in a way is nice. But at the same time, what do you do then, right? It's not really the, the item with the best upgrades. It doesn't really, like... It doesn't upgrade as quickly as boots, it doesn't power spike the same way as boots. Um, I think if you're building it on a support and you're looking to build a winged blade, then maybe there's an, an argument to be made here. If like the any team comp is very slow heavy um, and you specifically want to counter that, it has high magical damage, then I think you could go ancient blade and say, hey, I can rotate a little bit quicker and then I can also get my winged blade relatively quickly, which is nice. Um, the other upgrades, I don't, yeah, I don't really see that those would be the items that anyone would really want in early game, like be it Toxic Blade, be it, be it Witch Blade, maybe, um, yeah, be it Relic Dagger. I, I think it's not going to be super popular. Maybe this is, might go up a bit to A, uh, but the overall stats I think are, are relatively weak, even though it's cheaper and the movement speed can be very nice on some guards. For like, for a solo, for example, this would be absolutely useless because the little bit of movement speed is just not going to make enough of a difference, in my opinion. Then we have Glowing Emerald. This is, in my opinion, a very, very strong item when we're looking at, uh, at early game items. Um, 600 gold, uh, 100 health, and 10 HP 5, which is a ridiculous amount of sustain in early game, which is a ton more HP. Like, this is 20 HP every 10 seconds in early game. Like, you're not gonna get poked that much, and, and, and also this upgrades into Thebes, so you're gonna get benefit from this, so if you're playing in the support, you, like, it's not much of a reason not to build it, uh, unless, you know, you have a very aggressive strategy in mind. So I think Glowing Emerald at least A+, maybe even, maybe even higher, maybe even uh, almost S tier material. Maybe, yeah, maybe in terms of support, I think this is still an S tier item, even though uh, even though there are other options for upgrading, most certainly now. I think this item alone by itself is still in incredibly good. Then we have Cloak. Cloak is a super awkward item. 650 gold, uh, 10 physical and 10 magic protection. Now, a total of 20 protections in itself isn't bad, but you usually don't want mixed defense in early game unless you're playing support. Um... And if you're playing support, you most certainly do not want Cloak in early game because Cloak really doesn't provide anything uh, for a support. If you want to go, go mix defense, you, you're going into Gone of Thieves, you're not going Hide of the Urchin. And the other upgrades really don't make any sense in early game. So as such, I would say Cloak is a C tier uh, in terms of early game viability. Even and, and yeah, if it was like focused on one stat, then maybe it would have some more value, but the upgrades just, just ruin it and the mixed stats just make no sense for most cards. Mask comes with 100 health and 100 mana for 700 gold. Uh, really expensive, really not offering much. Um, unless you're specifically going into ranked us. Uh, I don't see like most people considering to pick this up as well. Like the tier 2 ranked us, uh, fighter's mask being for, for early aggression. Uh, and then you're not building the, just the mask. So yeah, I, I think the stat increase on this was interesting. But 100 health alone is, is really not much when like Glowing Emerald is 100 health plus 10 HP 5. Uh, I'm kind of torn if I put this in, in B or C tier, but no, I think it's even a C tier item because um, on its own, it's, it's just not going to provide you with any... No, may, maybe it just, maybe just, just, just low B, but like somewhere in between there, somewhere down there, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, Gem of Fate. Gem of Fate is, is also... No, it's, it's even worse, arguably. Gem of, there's no reason to build Gem of Fate in early game because it costs uh, 900 gold, which is way too ex expensive to build at the start of the game and just provides you with 10% cooldown reduction, which most guards don't get much value out of. If you need cooldown reduction, you know, there's a starter item for that. You can build Sense of Time, which comes with a whole lot more stats. Obviously, cooldown reduction is still a great stat and they specifically don't want you to combine Gem of Fate uh, and Sense of Time. So this makes sense, right? This is just specifically Hyrus not wanting this item to be built in early game. Uh, and most of the upgrades not particularly being like early game upgrades anyways. So yeah, just don't build an early game. It's just no reason. Like build it later. It's it's a great item later, but at the start, it's just there's no reason to. <laughs> some some of the effects don't even work until level five. So yeah, don't do it. Breastplate, uh, 600 gold, 20 physical protection. I think this is actually a pretty solid item. Um, I would say this is an A plus item. 
I think 20 physical protection is extremely nice. It's the highest uh, physical protection you can get from a pure defense item. Though uh, we had something earlier here. We had Imperial Helm, which uh, technically provides you with more. Like in a one-on-one in -on -one competition, Imperial Helm would beat Breastplate at the same price point. Um, the reason why I'm putting this here is because I still think that in terms of upgrades, it's uh, just a very good option uh, with Breastplate of Valor in solo. Emphasis on in solo. Please do not rush this in support. And maybe maybe you can rush this in support now. I don't even know anymore. Maybe that might actually an be an option now. Probably not, but hey. Um, yeah, but again, it, it's definitely it's definitely worse than Imperial Helm. I saw more towards the end of here. But it's better than a lot of other defensive choices in the early game. Um, because 20 physical protection is just such a heavy boost. And then we have Enchanted Kusari, the magical uh, equivalent of this, so to speak. And honestly... This is an insane item. If you're against a magical laner and you can find a way to justify this, in my opinion, this is incredibly good. Because this is 20 magical protection as well. So high protection, 650 gold, and 5 MP5. And again, I think MP5 is incredibly valuable early game uh, for aggression. I think it's not quite as good as Glowing Emerald, and it's, it's used for a different purpose. Um, but I think it's a very, very good item. Actually, maybe it's more of an A-plus item. Maybe it's more, excuse me, more like breastplate territory. But it's it's definitely very good. Like, it's not it's not even, like, close to these guys. Um, yeah, it's just that most guards don't use most of the upgrades that well. But, like, uh, Genji's guard uh, can still be an option. And uh, if you can use... And, and obviously, the, the buffed, uh, buffed uh, Shogun's Kusari as well um, could be great for some basic attacking soul laners now if you ever against the magical so definitely value in that um maybe you can even run in support for more aggression hmm. against the magical lineup yeah why not so yeah many many options with that so consider this it's i think it's a it's a great item now um a great item because the upgrades are better and the stats of the item itself have always been very good then we have talisman uh 75 health uh, and 15 magical defense now this doesn't come with MP5, same price, also 650. Um, but I think it's it's very comparable uh, to Antonio Kusari overall. Uh, most of the upgrades not as useful, depending on the matchup. You might want to build a hardwood, for example, then it's it's better. But you know, depends on the situation. Uh, but definitely uh, a, a stronger end item here between the health and the protections that it offers. Just not good in physical matchups. And then we have Iron Mail, uh, 75 health and 10 physical protection. I think this is uh, mainly because uh, physical protection is a little bit more valuable in early game. Um, I do think, however, with the same price, 650 gold, uh, it's just a little bit weaker if you're looking to specifically counter out an enemy. Uh, you're not so concerned uh, with minions. And, well, some of the upgrades are harder to make work in, in solo, for example. Uh, I think these have a little bit more flexibility because... Uh, both of them kind of have a solo option and a support option. Whereas Iron Mail, no, I guess I guess you can go Mystical Mail. No, I, actually, never mind. Never mind. We put it up here as well. I think that that actually uh, justifies it for A plus as well. If you're going into Mystical early, um, that is definitely an option now too, uh, which I think we might see a lot. So yeah, you can see we have a lot of A plus items. We have a fair few B tier items, and then something in between. I think there's just some items that are just designed to be a little bit better in early than others and just are designed with better early upgrades and because of those two things uh, I think they end up a little bit higher but yeah that's an an overall overview where I put place the items again nothing super serious nothing uh, where I say you have to agree with me or you're wrong uh, just a just a fun little list uh, just to, to try that out and see uh, where I would end up with all these items after listing all their stats and, and going through all of them uh, if I've made any mistakes, uh, feel free to point them out. I'm sorry if I messed up any of the numbers. There was a lot of number writing. Might have messed up here or there. Maybe one of the items is not as great as I thought it would be. But yeah, that was fun. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you're new to the channel, feel sub button, maybe the bell. Uh, or I will come up with a new outro soon. And I hope to see you for the next one soon as well. Deke Sloth, out.